Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys the sell model and buy model, okay? And these are very good to kind of pay attention to whether we're in a buy or sell model. And a lot of times what you'll see is you might be in a buy model on a higher time frame, but a sell model on a lower time frame. Um, it really depends on the time frame you're um, kind of playing. And by no means will this video be 100% correct on what a sell model and buy model actually is. Like... I don't feel like ICT explains it well enough, um, but I'm going based off what I've seen and how I use it. And when I use this buy and sell model, I have like um, basically a 100% win rate. Um, once we get to a certain point in the model, I know a price target's gonna hit. So I, I'll always like short or long to that price target because I know to complete the model, we have to hit that price target. So it definitely helps me find liquidity. Um, and I, I've gotten some really good wins off of knowing what model we're in so um, it, it can be really useful so basically what the sell and buy model is it is this so this is the sell model okay so you can kind of see these boxes um, and it kind of just has to look like this kind of this curve shape okay and there should be some consolidation like there should be consolidation expansion consolidation expansion consolidation and then reversal um, like this might be subjective, so it might be like on the way down, we might not even get an entry. There, like, as you can see, this might be a fair value gap entry. This might be a fair value gap entry. This might be a fair value gap entry. That's where smart money's getting in. But I'll kind of show you what I mean in a minute. So, this would be the my buy model. Again, it's the other way around. And you notice when we complete it, we hit the we hit liquidity. So, we go above this green box. Um, and so, let me show you a few examples. So, this is my Discord and my premium channel. Um, and this is just going a little back. This is, I, I've posted this w way more than this, um, but that's the one I found. So I said, if bias is bearish, liquidity should hit. And this is what I meant by liquidity. And you can see there's a fair value gap right here. But why did I think this liquidity would hit? Because, um, and sorry in advance, I can't pull this up on my chart because this is way too far back, but I'm going to try to show you the concept. So why did I think liquidity would hit? Well, we had this kind of curve, so you see this like bell-shaped curve, so that looked good. We had consolidation here after consolidation here, so we have consolidation, expansion, consolidation, more expansion, consolidation, and then if you can't see it now, but if you look over the right, we actually did take liquidity um, on a larger time frame, and then what happens? We go down, and on the five minute, I wouldn't consider this a clear, clear market structure shift because no obvious lows being broken. But we go down, retrace, and then when we break this low and go down, I would consider this a like a kind of a sell model at that point. And then we form the fair value gap when we break this structure, okay? And I'm gonna be honest, sometimes if there's a like fair value gap down here, so in this example, there's a fair value gap down a discount. Um, and let me try to show you what I mean, um, like even from today. So here was the, here's one of the sell models today. Okay, boom, liquidity was down here. And you can see what happened, okay? So this is kind of a little bit of a worse example. Um, so actually, I'll show you this one um, for the, actually, no, I'll just show you this one, it's fine. So in this one, we never actually end up completing it until today. So technically it would be from right here. So we never hit liquidity. We never completed this model right here. And why would I start at this low and not this low? Well, you could start at this low, uh, but you can see that this is kind of represents a little more consolidation rather than this. This is just a retracement and a downtrend to me. Um, and then we created a higher low. So I usually start at the low before the before we start going up. And here here's something you need to know. I do not know this is a sell model until we're coming kind of down until we're down here. But once I do know it's a sell model and I know 100% we're hitting there, if I figure that out right here, like you can see in this example, when we broke this, I was way more bearish. And we get this nice kind of curve. Um, and based off screen time, you'll kind of recognize when this curve is looks good for the sell model or not. And I don't really know that this is the sell model until we're under this and we break market structure shift. So I do not know this is a sell model until we break this. So keep that in mind. But once I do, I know we have to hit down here to complete it. And what does that mean? That means I'm only looking for short setups. And no matter where I enter, this is the ultimate target. But 
I know that Price wants to go here because this is the sell metal. It has to complete. So I 100% know Price wants to go here. So that's why I alert short setups occasionally um, if I especially see that. And in this example, okay, you can see we had a bullish fair value gap here, bullish fair value gap here, but these were not in discount. This was the only bullish fair value gap in discount. And you can see this fair value gap was respected a little bit, and then we ended up rejecting. But why did I not think we were going to bounce off this fair value gap and go up here? Well, on this time frame, we hit liquidity in a higher time frame. And in this example, I think we did as well. So this was 1140. This is the one hour. Um, let me just make sure. So on this, this is the one hour. So this is the this is the pump up. So we break this, which could be a liquidity grab, but some people will be like, oh no, that's a market structure shift. But if you look over to the right, what else do we have? We have a four hour fair value gap right here, which is also very bearish, and we just finished filling it. So this is the whole, this is the fair value gap. Um, it's, that's actually the one hour. Let me go to the four hour real quick. So in the four hour, we have a fair value gap right here. And yes, this is big, but I don't, I'm don't. i not just gonna short randomly in this. So we've just filled this fair value gap. We have a liquidity grab, and you could consider this a liquidity grab in live time, especially because we have this four hour fair value gap. But keep in mind, when this wick happens, when this happens, you're not gonna know it's a sell model just yet, okay? You're not gonna know for sure until you kind of start seeing this curve down like this. And every sell and buy model, it has this curve from my experience. Um, if if we kind of go up, like consolidate and go up and make higher highs and higher lows, and we go like this up and down, then I wouldn't really consider that a good sell model. It kind of has to have this circular kind of shaped curve, um, in my opinion, and there has to be some like consolidation on the way up, which is basically just called reaccumulation. So we have reaccumulation, and then this or th we have accumulation, reaccumulation reaccumulation and basically in that reaccumulation you'll see your retracements the fair value gaps that's where smart money is getting out okay and obviously we never had one right here um, but we did have one right here in the five minute but yeah so once you see this market structure shift and once you look over in the lower or the higher time frame and you see like in this example where we just finished filling a four hour fair value gap we took liquidity from these highs and we break market structure shift and, and we have this curve. So that immediately tells me this is gonna be a sell model. So what does that tell me? That tells me we're definitely going down here. I'm almost 100% confident we're going down here in live time when I'm right here. And I've learned so many plays that I, I think I have 100% win rate right now alerting plays when we're in some a scenario like this. So like I'll alert plays when we're kind of going down and I know it's a sell model. If I see a one minute fair value gap entry on a retrace, I'll just slap it because I know price wants to go down here. And not specifically price, but I know that algorithm wants to go here. And it's just something that I've kind of noticed um, since looking at these sell and buy models. I've noticed that whenever we're in one, we always have to hit liquidity before we complete. Um, so again, but what happens if there's like a bullish fair value gap here, let's say. Let's pretend this is a bullish fair value gap. Well, here's the thing. When we have this curve, oftentimes what's gonna happen is we're gonna either like short-term bounce off this or just kind of, yeah, I'll just say we're gonna short-term bounce off of it. But how do you know that we're not gonna bounce off of it and go way up here? Well, that mostly is due to the higher time frame. So in this example, specifically in the four hour, you can see that we just filled the four hour fair value gap um, right here. Uh, sorry, not right there. We just filled this four hour fair value gap um, and there's no reason to go long. And we broke market structure shift on the five minute, even on the 15 minute, we broke it. So in that example, um, kind of specifically, like, yes, you could probably counter trend scalp this fair value gap, but because of this curve and just stuff I can't really explain, more screen time in my part, I know we have to hit this. But yes, if there's a, a, a bullish fair value gap in the way, um, and you're shorting from up here, that would definitely be one of my take profits, especially if you weren't as confident if it was a sell model because, yes, we could bounce off that bullish fair value gap and retrace and then go down again, but you kind of just want to be looking for this kind of overall curve. I would really go back test. You can find these in any time frame. Um, and 
Yeah, so you just want to look for this curve. You don't want it to be straight up and straight down. You kind of want it to be a nice curve like this. And usually you'll be able to tell that it's a sell model or buy model probably about halfway down on the sell model, okay? Um, and that's still really good because if you realize it's a sell model in the moment, at like so let's say here at 3867 as we get this market structure shift, well, the target's 3835, so you can still make 30 points off that, which is amazing. And it's really high confidence because you know it has to complete. So this is today's example, um, and I'm going to show you something real quickly. So let me just take a brush. So cell model, buy, oh no, I'm going to change the color actually. This is the cell model. You can kind of see that nice curve, but it left us no entries on the way down. Maybe the one minute there was an entry, but you can end up seeing we hit liquidity right here. And we get the cell model back up which is right here let me just do this or we get the buy model back up boom we hit liquidity right here and then we have kind of a short term buy model right here we hit liquidity right there uh, but what do you notice about all these they all have like a kind of a nice curve to them okay it's kind of v-shaped but you can you can see they kind of have a nice curve okay and Every single one of these starts after hitting some form of liquidity. And you can see how big this wick is, and you can see this wick hit right here. So this is a big form of liquidity. Why? Because it's an obvious low in the middle of nowhere. And once we we kind of pump up here, and we get to this top, and you see these wicks, and then we're kind of coming down, that's when I start to be like, oh, this looks like a cell model. It has the start of the curve, and then we go down again, okay? And, and remember, Technically, liquidity is down here because this is the lowest low before this cell model was created. And what else do we notice? So we go in the one hour. This is a lot of knowledge, guys. I I'm, I'm really hope you guys understand this. Um, this. Some of this is just based off screen time and you will not get until you watch this in live time. But on the on the larger time frame, you can see we're in a one hour fair value gap. And we can see we had this low right here, which is a line I just drew in the five minute. And why does price want to go under here in reverse again? Well, it's because we're in the middle of a fair value gap. If we weren't, then I would expect price to just go down here and there would just be a massive breakout down. But in this case, you see, as soon as we hit under here, price reverses all the way up there to this order block uh, because we're in a one hour fair value gap by itself. But again, you can kind of see this curve that we have right here for the cell model. And um, it, again, this is going to take screen time to recognize. Like, there. I'll probably recognize this model in the bigger time frame, maybe once a week, sometimes more. It depends on what time frame I'm on. But once you start seeing this curve and you see like these fair value gap entries on the way up and you start seeing them on the way down, likely chance, like there's a very, very high chance we're going to go to the bottom, okay? Um, and I know some of you guys are going to ask me, well, how do you know if, if like this is a market structure shift and not a liquidity grab? Basically, you just got to look at kind of the higher time frame. So in this example, you can see there's equal highs right here. And I never consider anything a market structure shift really if we're going above equal highs. Um, that's just one of my rules. So if you if you zoomed out, you could see that these are equal highs. So likely chances are that was a liquidity grab to go down here. But let's say there wasn't equal highs right there. Maybe I'd be a little more skeptical. But because there was, and there's a fair value gap right here, I was more skeptical we were going down to hit that. Um, and if we look at the 15 minute, it's just one big giant fair value gap. And we take liquidity over this. Okay. And a lot of times we'll do this. We'll reject the fair value gap like the bottom of it. And then we'll go over that short term high. And then we'll go back up it deeper into the fair value gap and then reject again. But I would suggest starting to look for these curves. Um, right here. I would not consider this a sell model. You can kind of see it starts to curve all really good, but what's the difference between something like this and something like this? Well, on the larger time frame, or not on the larger time frame, on, on this pump up, you can see how kind of energetic these candles are, and what do you see? So we don't get any obvious, obvious lows here, okay? The, the only obvious low we get is right here. But you can see even we don't even retrace into these fair value gaps and then we end up pumping up. Um, and then this is earnings. Um, 
and then we had fair value gaps on here and based off of screen time you can just kind of tell these are very very bullish bots um and my screen just froze oh there we go and on this one we don't really get any of these major bullish fair value gaps okay we get one right here but what's wrong with it it's not in discount um which is the first problem and we get this tiny one right here which we end up respecting for a little bit but based on the curve in this cell volume you can kind of just tell we're going down there and you're not going to get this right away okay this took me probably a few months to start noticing the difference between why this wasn't a cell curve down at this point versus why this was why this went down a little faster than this did um and it's really just it's really just looking at the higher time frame, seeing if we have any obvious, obvious market structure shifts, um, seeing the volume and the candles that were created on this. You can see how much volume there was and how strong and energetic these candles were. And yes, you could argue that these candles were strong and energetic too. But again, we're still in the four hour f bearish for a really gap in the higher time frame. So this would be more of a liquidity grab to me because it's strong and energetic and it's over an intermediate term high in a for in a fair value gap um and like sometimes you're just gonna kind of you're, you're gonna mix it as up okay and i definitely did mix it up too like right here you can kind of see this starts looking like a curve kind of and then boom what happens we bounce well why do we bounce well, on the four hour at this time, we never hit the bearish fair value gap yet. And usually a four hour fair value gap like this, that will usually end up going to hit. Um, so if you keep that kind of in mind, if you keep that in mind that we haven't hit this four hour fair value gap way up here yet when we're here and we're in a buy model on a on a higher time frame, look, these are equal, these are equal highs. We have this obvious liquidity grab from CPI, and if you don't know this is an obvious liquidity grab, then I would definitely t advise you to study more. But we have this obvious energetic liquidity grab from CPI, and you can see this curve starts kind of playing out, okay? And here's the here's the liquidity grab, here's the accumulation to go up, here's the reaccumulation in this very valley gap. So like just looking at that we're in a we're in a buy model a bigger time frame anyways so you're still bullish when we go up here okay so going back to the five minute knowing that we haven't hit the price target for um that why would we go way down here and then go and then bounce yes it could have been an inducement but again if you kind of look down in the five minute all these fair value gaps were filled there's not really any left over this one was filled this one was filled this one was filled this one was filled so even if we did go down here that would be bearish because all these bearish for really or all these bulls for really gaps are filled so that's kind of why um this kind of started curving out but in the end we never liquidity and it's going to take you screen time to start realizing stuff like this you're going to see a curve and you're going to be like oh i think we're going down there but you might be wrong because you need to really pay attention to the higher time frame. You need to see if we're in any bearish for value gaps or a bearish order block on the higher time frame, or if we're below one. And usually, if we're below one, you and we're very close. Usually, we we go to hit it anyways. So you definitely don't want to short until we end up hitting it, or kind of look for these models until until we end up hitting it. But again, I would just recommend kind of looking for these curves. You can see a sell model, buy model. We hit liquidity, and we hit liquidity right there sell model again um this is a good sell model too and again you're not going to realize in lifetime you're not going to realize this is a sell model until we kind of break structure like a, an energetic break and in this case this was the energetic break you can see how big this candle was so if we did retrace back here you would have entered but obviously you can see sometimes it leaves without entry and after the market structure shift this one's even cleaner because there's no bills for value gaps on this, okay? So there's nowhere you're really expecting a bounce. So it's likely chances are we're going to go straight down and hit this anyways. And as soon as we complete this model, boom, we reverse. And again, this has the same kind of curve I've been trying to show you guys to look for. Um, so that's really helpful. And yeah, so target I ended up hitting there. This is a buy model. I this is very pointy liquidity and it had a really nice curve and this was an obvious liquidity grab and we had a very strong move up 
Um, so I just knew that was going to hit. That I ended up hitting. I never posted that. But again, this is going to take screen time to recognize. I would kind of just go over examples or maybe ask me in Discord, like, oh, is this a sell model or is this a buy model? And ask me in live time because you can really, you'll test my knowledge and I'll try to answer you in live time and I'll see if I'm right. Um, but again, this kind of has the curve, but it doesn't hit liquidity. Why? Because this was a liquidity grab to go up in itself. So we're not going to form a sell model after we just completed a, a sell model in the higher time frame, which is this. Okay, so we have this sell model. We're not just going to form another sell model. We need a buy model now. Um, so you can see we reverse under that, and then we create the kind of the buy model. Um, again, look for these curves right here again. Um, you can see that curve, and you won't know this is a sell model until we kind of break major structure. So this isn't major in my opinion. We could easily broke this, bounce off this bullish fair value cap and retest and retest it. But once we break below this low, then you know that we just switch trends and now we're in a downtrend. So and you can see it kind of exemplifies this curve. So where do you know we have to hit? We have to hit down here. And this ended up taking a while. Um, we actually ended up having a big, a big inducement model, and then we finally hit it. But again, it finally hit. Um, let me just show. So again, like right here, sell model. When do you know it's a sell model? Well, you know it's a sell model one when we we totally knife through this fair value gap, and two. We form a, a short-term low, and then we just knife through that again. So you'll know it's a sell model by the time you get here, but there's still 50 more points to go off this sell model. So you could have shorted any time during here, and we have the curve. So that's kind of the examples I'm going to show you now. Um, I could go on and on about this. This is going to take you screen time to get down in live time. You'll find these sell models and buy models on literally any time frame. You gotta just look for the curve, and usually I recognize it when it's 50% complete on the way down or up. So usually the first half is already done, and usually I recognize it when we're like 50% complete on the other side. Um, but remember, make sure you're paying attention to the larger time frame. This is going to this is going to take you time. Okay, it took me time. Don't just be like, oh, this video is crap because I'm saying I'm I'm doing this all in hindsight, but Trust me, these models I'm showing you, I shorted them and I and I longed them like these short models. I shorted all the way down here today because once we kind of broke this low, I was like, yeah, this definitely looks like a sell model curve. I'm, I think we're 100% hitting there, and I shorted all that. Um, so again, it's gonna take time. You got again, the key aspects you want to kind of take into account is looking for that curve looking for that kind of consolid like a, at least one consolidation on the way up sometimes you might go up and there's only going to be one period of consolidation okay there doesn't have to be two or three or four sometimes there's one and on the way down sometimes there might be zero redistributions on the way down or up because it'll leave without the entry uh, like this for example this is the tiny cell model but and you can see that curve again this is the tiny cell model off of this order block right here. And you can see on the way down, it really left you with no entries, okay? So sometimes that's going to happen, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Try to tell me if you find these in real times. The, I mostly just went over cell models because of how bearish or how uh, bearish the bias has been lately. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, and other than that, peace out.